Okay, so it's now time for the Kubuntu Focus follow-up review. So a little over a week ago, I uploaded a video of a quick unboxing and general first impressions of the Kubuntu Focus laptop. For those unaware, the Kubuntu Focus is a laptop built in partnership with Tuxedo Computers designed specifically for Linux. What this means is it comes pre-installed with Kubuntu and features quite a modified version of the KDE desktop environment. So I've been using it as my main computer now since upload. I haven't used really anything else during that time. So I'm going to update you guys on how I got on with this laptop. So starting with the overall build of the machine. It's made from a mixture of metal and plastic material. But for the most part, it feels like a solid and sturdy device. Apart from when you get towards the screen, you will notice a little bit of flex here and there. On the lid, you'll be greeted with a rather fresh looking Kubuntu logo that lets you and anyone around you know this isn't your typical laptop with Windows or Mac OS inside. When the device is powered on and the lid is open, you also get some rather cool lighting effects bleeding through here. On the sides, you'll find a generous selection of ports which should keep you from reaching for a dongle to connect any of your additional accessories. On the one side, you'll find an Ethernet port, multi-card reader, a full-size USB 3.0 port and your audio jacks. Turning it around onto the other side, you'll find your power rim port, a full HDMI port, a display port, two USB Type-C ports, and another full-size USB 3.0 port. I have absolutely no complaints here, as I'm all about living that no-dongle life. Flipping over to the bottom, you won't notice too much here, but what you will notice is that all it takes is one standard screwdriver to take the back off and get inside this laptop. This makes it especially easy when you're doing user upgrades. This is very refreshing from a premium laptop. When you finally get to opening the laptop, it can all be done with one hand as the majority of the weight of this device is right where it should be, at the bottom. Here you'll find a full-sized keyboard, including a number pad to the right. The keys have a very satisfying multicolour LED backlight, which I found very useful while using this machine in darker rooms. Only while I was getting used to the placement of the keys though, because after a few days I was typing away with the same speeds and efficiency I get from my own personal laptops or computer keyboards. I was more than happy with the feedback from the keys and you get some decent travel at around 3mm. And to put the icing on the cake, the super key has a Kubuntu logo on it, and it also has some custom keycaps for WASND. There's just something satisfying about having a laptop designed for Linux without any leftover Windows logo or branding. When it comes to the touchpad, I've read some users complaining about the sensitivity, though I didn't notice the sensitivity being too out of whack on mine. Overall, I had a good time using the glass touchpad, which has multi-gesture support and two physical buttons for left and right click. The Kubuntu Focus has two stereo speakers that are positioned on the bottom of the device on the right-hand left corners. I'm not entirely convinced that this is the best placement for speakers, but I'm sure they had their reasons. What I can say is, though they get loud enough at full volume, the overall sound results in a rather tinny quality that lacks any real depth. If you intend to listening to a lot of music or watching movies on this device, I would personally suggest you get a decent pair of headphones or some external speakers. This is what the speakers sound like at full volume. Now moving on to the screen, it's a nice 16.1 inch IPS panel with a refresh rate of 144Hz. I found the viewing angles were absolutely brilliant as you would expect from an IPS panel and I could make out a good amount of detail of whatever was on the screen despite viewing it from less than optimal angles. I found it to get plenty bright for me personally though I've been informed that due to the 144Hz display the maximum brightness that you can achieve in this device is around 278 nits. What I can say though is I spent most of my time using its brightness at around one third of the maximum only really needing to crank it up more when using it outside. But if you're someone that likes to crank the brightness all the way up and get a lot of light out of your screen, you might find it a little lacking in this area. But again, thanks to the wealth of ports available on this laptop, you will be able to extend your viewing pleasure by adding up to three external monitors at a full 4K resolution. I spent most of my time using it with one external monitor to get a nice little dual setup going. The bezels are an okay size, while they're not quite infinity display levels, I didn't find them too large to the point that it bulked the overall size of the unit out. In the top bezel you have the webcam that features a shutter that will give you privacy concern users out there a bit of extra peace of mind. Anyone attempting to spy on you while the shutter is closed will be bang out of luck. Unfortunately, that's where the praise ends on the webcam for me. 
Now I know we shouldn't expect too much from laptop cameras these days, but I think we should expect a little bit more when we're paying a premium. The webcam has a max resolution of 720p, which wouldn't be too bad if it was of a better quality. As you can see here, it gives you a rather grainy image without a lot of detail. While I'm here, we may as well mention the inbuilt microphone too. While it does have noise suppression, the sound quality isn't great. So unless you want to have your video calls look and sound like this. Okay, here we are using the inbuilt webcam and microphone and here's a little demo of using the shutter. Boom, there we go. So it's not the best sound quality and video quality, but hmm. it might be worth using an external webcam. Jumping onto the software side of things, each of these Kubuntu Focus laptops feature a rather unique desktop setup. You'll find your panel, an application launcher, plus your clock and everything else to the right hand side of the screen. Here is where you will launch and minimize your applications. Now, personally, I found this hindered my productivity. I've always used and become somewhat accustomed to having a panel on either the top, bottom or left hand side of the screen. I'm not gonna to complain too much about this, however, as we all have our own personal preferences here. And the beauty of Linux, and KDE in particular, is the fact that a user can customize pretty much every aspect of their desktop look and feel without breaking too much of a sweat. On the plus side, I actually grew quite fond of the way it handled the application launchers, with them not being quite pinned apps, but shortcuts that then move over to the running applications when they are in use, which saves you some additional space on your panel. Another thing I wasn't overly keen on here was the way they have set up the virtual desktops. Again, this is all down to my own personal preference, but I prefer to cycle through desktops in the direction of left to right, as opposed to up and down. But it doesn't quite end there. You can also trigger the virtual desktops to switch by moving your cursor to the top or bottom of the screen edges. Accidentally triggering these reminds me of the modest rage I would enter when triggering hot corners without meaning to. Fortunately for me, this can all be turned off too. However, I decided at the beginning of this week, I wasn't going to change too many of the defaults so I could put myself into the shoes of someone just buying this laptop without too much in the knowledge of Linux or for that matter KDE. Now we've got my little niggles out of the way, everything else was absolutely fine. I found the default applications were a good mixture of programs that should get most users up and running without having to download too many additional packages as soon as their laptop arrives. Some notable inclusions here are Caden Live, Steam, LibreOffice and even Minecraft for you Minecraft players out there, plus a whole lot more. I'm a big fan of the desktop widget which houses a lot of commonly used keyboard shortcuts. I found myself referring to it quite a lot for about the week. You'll also find a few links on the desktop, one of which will be for validated workflows. What this is is a link to a page on their website that is regularly updated with guides on how to perform particular tasks and get the most out of your Kubuntu focus. I've been more than happy with how KD has been implemented here despite my little complaints here and there. I don't think most users will have too much of an issue either. New software installations can be performed in the Discover store as well as system updates. Or if you're more comfortable with the command line, just pop open a console and away you go. On the performance side of things, this is where this thing really shines and I've been a very happy bunny this week. Without beating around the bush too much, this thing is a bit of a beast. The unit I have here is equipped with 32 gig RAM, an i7 9750H and an RTX 2060 dedicated GPU. It has powered through pretty much every task I've thrown at it. I've also played a mixture of games and as you can see from the frame rates that I'll display on the screen, all while playing at high or ultra settings, have been exceptional and haven't dipped once during my whole week with it. It also excels in other resource intensive tasks like editing videos and images. I will mention though that when the fans ramp up, they are exceptionally loud and at points even louder than my desktop computer. So if you're into playing games like Counter-Strike Go, I'd recommend using headphones so you can hear the little details of your enemy's footsteps. It was also more than capable to manage multiple virtual machines due to the amount of RAM and CPU cores. And to make things even easier, it comes pre-installed with VirtualBox. Multitasking on the Kubuntu Focus has been a dream. I found myself running multiple programs all at the same time of varying requirements without even pushing the laptop to anywhere near breaking point. I'm not used to having so much power on the laptop and it has really been a fun week spent with this hardware. When it comes to the storage, you'll be getting a Samsung Evo Plus with the base model that starts at 250 gig, which can be encrypted at no extra cost during your purchase. And then you can bump this all the way up to two terabytes, plus you can also equip it with an additional Samsung Evo Plus, again, all the way up to another two terabytes. I was getting an average read speed on this device of about 3.2 GBS, so no complaints here. 
Networking has been taken care of by an Intel Dual AC9260 for the wireless, which provided a strong and reliable connection at all times. It also has gigabit LAN from Realtek and you get Bluetooth 5, though I didn't spend too much time at all using Bluetooth. Battery life has been impressive, but also a mixed bag. So I did two tests to see how long it lasts before you need to run to the power socket. One for the integrated GPU and another for the dedicated GPU. I found when using the dedicated GPU and performing light tasks like surfing the web and sending emails plus watching the odd YouTube channel, it struggled to last a full two hours. But then when I switched to the integrated GPU to perform the same test, my battery life increased to around about four and a half hours. One thing I might have to add here though is I don't usually have my brightness very high and I had Bluetooth disabled throughout my time using it. For a laptop of this size and power, I don't think it's too bad going. You will also notice it pops up with a dialogue when using the GPU on battery that suggests switching over to the integrated graphics to increase the overall life of your battery. This however does require a full reboot in order to make the switch. Customer support has been absolutely brilliant. Anytime I've had an issue or query, I've shot them a message and they've replied almost instantly, despite any difference in time zones. They offer free support for all of their customers and even if it's something you only have to use once or twice, it's brilliant to have it there for when you really need it. I can't speak more highly of how pain-free this process was and I think a lot of other companies could take a leaf out of their book on this one. So, in conclusion, who is this laptop for and should you buy it? Well, if you're someone who's looking for a powerful laptop that will breeze through most intensive tasks that you throw at it, but also comes pre-installed with a nice version of Linux out of the box, then this is for you. And if you've got the cash to burn, then yeah, you should probably go ahead and consider buying it, especially if KDE is your go-to desktop environment. It's built on top of a sturdy Ubuntu LTS release and they offer great customer support. You get a one-year warranty as standard, but can increase it by an extra year at checkout. Despite its shortcomings when it comes to the quality of the webcam, microphone and inbuilt speakers, it does more than make up for it in other areas. And while it is expensive, if you compare it to some of the other premium laptops out there that come with similar hardware, it, it, it kind of evens out. Plus every purchase of a Kubuntu Focus means a small portion of your purchase money will be donated directly to the Kubuntu Council. What this means is you'll be playing a small part in making the Kubuntu an overall better distribution. I've personally really enjoyed my time that I've spent with this device, and if I had the disposable income, I would also seriously consider buying one for myself. Though at that point, I would completely redesign the desktop look and feel. I don't think I could ever get used to the way that desktop's been laid out, but again, this is all very easy to change yourself. I'll leave a link in the description for the full spec list of the Kubuntu Focus laptop. That's been the K-Focus laptop. I've been Tyler's Tech. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.